Hi everyone, welcome to our video series on the Becker-Murphy model of racket channel addiction. In this video, we're going to give an introduction to the model, and then we're going to go and solve the baseline model. Let's go. So Gary Becker and Kevin Murphy set out in their 1988 paper, A Theory of Rational Addiction, to answer the question of how can our standard economic models where our agents solve optimal allocation problems of goods and services throughout their lifetime uh, and use that to account for people who live and suffer with addiction over the course of their lifetime. The way we do this is through considering the idea of addiction capital accumulation, meaning that there is a learning process of how to enjoy addictive goods. This model has become a workhorse in health economics because it could be applied to any scenario where there is a learning by consuming case which can be applied to a variety of cases of addictive substances or cases where you need to acquire a new taste for goods, like the demand for enjoying religious services or other services which require experience for you to go and enjoy. So the story of this model is as follows. We have a representative consumer who maximizes its utility by consuming a standard consumption good YT and an addictive good CT over a continuous finite time horizon with no uncertainty about the future. Practically speaking, our consumption of CT in one moment will have implications for the future in the form of consumption capital or addiction capital, ST, which enters our consumer's utility function as well. This means really that addictive good consumption will have implications for the future period's utility. Consumption capital can be treated with investment in treatment capital, DT, which can be either used to reduce or further develop addiction capital as it goes into our treatment option H as a function of this DT here. Our consumers' wages are impacted by their addiction through consumption capital, and we can think about how this addiction impacts our consumers' ability to make a living. Uh, if it's a good addiction, we should see an increase in wage, and if it's a bad addiction, which is you know often the case, which is why we want to use this model for it, we're going to go and see this you know, decreasing. Note that our horizon is finite, but we can endogenize the death condition by requiring uh, the condition that if YT falls below some Y bar, we consider our consumer dead. However, we won't think about this in our model for the time being. Mathematically, what we said could be written out in really just three lines where we have a consumer who's maximizing his lifetime utility subject to this law of motion of addiction capital and this budget constraint here where our good, which is not addictive, we're going to go and just call it a numerary. And that just means that we're going to normalize the price to being one. Um, where our choice variables for our consumer is he's going to choose the amount of non-addictive good consumption at each moment t, uh, the amount of addictive good consumption, consumption capital, and the investment in treatment. Um, again, where this h as a function of dt is either increasing or decreasing depending on the context that we are thinking about. So in terms of solving this model, we just go and run this all into a Hamiltonian, right? We have our standard constraint that we go and we have here. We have a kind of um, a static constraint right here. So we're just going to have a multiplier here that does not have a time uh, subscript inside of it. And plus our dynamic constraint here. Now note that we have our first order conditions with respect to our four variables. And we get the following result um, down here for equations one, two, three, and four. Directing attention to conditions one, two, and four and rearranging, we obtain the following equilibrium conditions. That being for our marginal utility for our non-addictive good at time t, our marginal utility for our addictive good at time t, our optimal treatment condition, which is equation 4a. And as for our final condition, three, uh, if we rearrange it, we go and we get the following result. Um, this is a linear first order differential equation that has the following solution uh, right here. And we interpret mu here as the marginal utility from addiction retention. So this is our first video on the Becker Murphy model of rational addiction. In the next video, we're going to work through a computable example. And after that, we're going to go and discuss the dynamics of this model. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.